Vince. Nice to meet you, Vince. Okay, what brings you in today for massage? Uh, my back is really sore. Well, could you show me where? Got the feet in here. Okay, so kind of like up through here. Yeah. Okay. And then across my shoulders. Kind of like across here? Yep. Okay, anything in the neck itself? Uh, no. Okay, so those two spots. Okay, perfect. Any history of injuries or problems that I need to be aware of? No. Okay, so this is my head's health history here. His health history looks fine, no major things. Unless there's any medications I need to worry about. You're not taking anything new that's not on here. Nope. Nothing else that I need to be concerned about. That's awesome. So I don't have to worry about any of those things. That's great. Okay, so um, what we're going to do today, have you had treatments before? Yes. Oh, excellent. Okay, that's wonderful. So. Because you've had a treatment before, I won't completely explain the routine of getting on the table for, but for the for the video, I'm going to. You're gonna lay face down on the table with your face in the face cradle. And then when I work on an area, I'm just gonna uncover that area, work on that area, cover you back up. So your comfort is obviously the most important thing to me. And I wanna make sure that if there's any areas that you find, oh, you know, maybe I'm not comfortable there or that's too tender, just let me know. Like I can stop anything at any point in time. You just say something, you won't offend me. Like it's not a big deal. Perfect. Okay? And then when I'm working with pressure, you can let me know what your pressure, what you like. So you may find that, hey, that's too deep or that's too light, or I thought I wanted it really deep and I don't, or I thought I wanted it light and I don't. So you can just give me feedback along the way. Again, you're not gonna offend me. I'm here to make sure that the treatment is 100% for you and that you're in control at all times. Like you can veto anything at any point in time. Perfect. Okay. And so what we'll do today is, do you want only back and neck or would you like back and neck and a full body? Uh, no, just back and neck is fine. Just back and neck. Okay, no problem. So I'm obviously going to need to adjust my timing based on what you need, what your wants and needs are. Okay. So if you find that um, you change your mind and you say, "Hey, I didn't realize my glute was so sore," or my back, and you want me to work on it, just let me know. I can adjust my treatment plan like at any point in time. Like Perfect. That's not a big deal okay. at all. Okay. And um, do you have any questions or concerns? No. No. Okay no. then. Well, and are you okay having your neck worked on as well? Because I find that, you know, when you're working on back and neck. Now, the other thing with, you know, because you said, you know, you've got pain through here. Oftentimes, a lot of that pain can actually come from through that upper glute area. So what I'll do is I'll drape to about here. Yep. I'll work on those upper glutes. Perfect. If I'm like, I'm not going to be able to really help your back out without working glutes, then I'll let you know. If we need to do that, will you consent to, to glute work? Yes, yes, for sure. Okay. So... There's our treatment plan, do you consent? Yes. You're good with that? Okay, Great. so I'm gonna give you a couple minutes to get on the table, get cozy, I'll go wash my hands, and I'll just knock on the door when I'm ready to come in. Awesome. I kind of open the door a little bit and holler, I don't look in in case you're knocking on the table. So if you see the door <laughs> open, don't worry, I'm not peeking, okay? No, I'm no. just gonna like okay. knock and say, hey. Okay. Okay, all right. Okay. Yeah. So I've created my treatment plan, which is going to be back and up. Now when I'm creating my treatment plan, uh, if I were to treat the legs, I would want to kind of have an idea ahead of time as to what do I need to do on the legs so I know how much time I'm going to spend. So I've got, you know, it's a 60 minute massage, so I've got to time it out. So I've already kind of got that figured out in my head when you're first learning. You want to write it all out so that you've got sort of like a little map that you're working with. So as I get started, I'm just going to adjust this knee a little bit because it's kind of cut off a little bit. So whenever I start, I always start, sheets are on. Just get the person used to your hands even being on them. And then from there, I find the waistline. So the top of the iliac crest, I come across, find his spine, one of his spinous processes, and I go just to the other side of the spinous process. Now, the table is a little bit high right here, but I can adjust it's an electric table, so you might have to go on your toes or you might have to squat down. And then what I do is I start off just with an assessment. I do a, just a general motion going up the spine. It's just a straight posterior, just from straight joint leg. And I get a feel for what's happening with this person's back. Does he have motion? So he's got a little bit of motion at the top, tiny bit there, like none there. It's like a rock, it's just not moving. So I know I'm gonna have to spend a little bit of time in there. Little bit of motion here, little bit of motion here, 
and then that low back is locked. So interestingly enough, now I can compare what I'm feeling to what he told me. He said, you know, low back, he's got, he explained up through here and then up through those shoulders. So then I'm gonna come to the other side, do the same thing. A little bit more motion on the left side than the right, which makes sense because he was a bit more locked on that right side. And this is 100% assessment for me. Oh, he's a little bit locked right there, I can feel that. So this is assessment, you have a feel for what's going on. And because I'm not usually saying this out loud, for the client, it's more of, oh, it's just, it's nice and relaxing. Just, you know, she's kind of getting used to it, warming up the spine. Now, interestingly enough, I'm actually getting some range of motion in the upper part, which I would have thought would have been completely locked, but just below it, it's locked. So this could just be, you know, maybe a lot of strain from a little bit of posture. Maybe it's coming from that mid back and it's so tight in the mid back that it's causing strain in the upper back. So then I'll proceed to drape. And we want to remember that draping here, you see the line going across, so you can see the cleft in the buttocks, you wanna be above that. This is a very strict line of working. So this is my boundary line. I don't wanna cross those sheets. If I wanna work a little bit more, I can drape a little bit more. But usually if I'm gonna do that, I'll also get a consent before I do additional draping. This is the way it's set. He knows it's like this, he's comfortable. I try and get as much lotion on here as I can in the beginning, just because I know most people are dry and it's gonna take a few loads and it can be quite cold. So what I'll often do is start with my palms down just to introduce it and then slowly add the lotion on. I've had it in the warmer, so it's a bit warmer, but sometimes lotion can be pretty cold and that's not overly comfortable for your client. Now the key here is keep your hands moving at a consistent pace for what you're doing. That will make your client feel very comfortable. So I'm just warming it all up. You'll find that the nervous system, if you jump right in, it's gonna react. Whereas even just a little bit of warm up, it's gonna make a big difference for your client that they're not feeling like, oh, like, holy cow, you just jumped into that spot or jumped into that spot. So it's kind of like just prepping it. Now, when I'm coming down the spine, I'm sussing again. So I'm coming down both sides of the spine, nice and slow. And I'm feeling for tension. Where does it feel a bit softer? Where does it feel a little bit harder? Now what I do here is I go down the upper part of the glutes and I go down and I compare the two sides. So I'm comparing the two sides of the spine, nice and slow. Where am I feeling? Oh, I feel like some tension right there as I go down. It's a little bit softer. And then is one side tighter than the other? So I check it again. Is one side tighter than the other? I'll just compare a couple of spots on each side. So right there is definitely tighter than this side. There's tighter than this side, which is interesting that I'm finding this side is tighter when you know it was really locked on this side and tied up in here. So I start thinking, hmm, I wonder what else is going on. assess these two sides and they actually seem fairly even and way tighter on this side right through there way tighter way tighter through there so now I have a decision to make where am I gonna start and I'm thinking about this as I'm working I'm going okay so sometimes I'll start down in here in the glutes and sometimes I'll start up here. What I'm looking for is the tightest spot. Now you can see, I don't know if you can see on this, on the video, but right through here is going very pink, very quickly. So because it's going pink so quickly and because it's really tight, I know that this is his most concerning spot, right in through here. 
So I'm going to start through here. And you, you might even find you just naturally want to just really work on that, that really, really tight area. And I'll just double check what's happening up and through the neck. I'm just going across just to see, okay, how much tightness is his body pushing back? Am I finding that there's an area of a, a big concern? It's okay if it just feels tight. I'm looking for the tightest right here. So I can find this spot right on here. So now I've got a bit of a road map. I know I've got a bad spot here, a bad spot here, and a bad spot here. So I know that this is where my focus is going to be here, here, and here. Out of those three spots, it's tightest, next, next. So I'm going to work the tightest spot first, which is going to be here. So I'm going to move the camera around so that you can see me working this side. Bang, bang, clunk, clunk. trying to move this guy around while I got lotion all over my hands. <laughs> there we go. Give it a nice wash when I get home. You almost need an assistant. I absolutely could use an assistant. However, I'll just work with what we got. I'll edit it. Okay. So now I'm going to come around to this tight, tight spot here. So this is going to be my focus is right here. Okay. Sorry, I can't quite get the camera right over top of it, but you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So now I'm just going to spend a little bit of time in this area. So I'm keeping with my posture, kind of went back and forth. So I'm going to start just by warming it up. I can see he's got some cupping marks here. And then I've got a nice cupping massage. And I can feel one spot in particular right there. It's and yeah, I can feel one rib here is really, really tight too. And probably my guess, because this is quite a tender area for him. Is this a tender area for you, Vince? Yep. Yeah. So now is where you also want to communicate with your client about how they're feeling, what they're experiencing, and check in with your pressure. The key here is slow. I don't need to rush. I'm just doing back and neck. So I don't have to rush. I know that in the time I have, I'm gonna be able to hit these three areas and a little bit of neck. If he wanted, well, I got some tightness, but I want a full body massage. Can you make sure you, you know, you treat my arms and my, my hands? And, you know, if I had this long, long list, then, you know, I would have had to talk to him to say, okay, I absolutely can hit all those areas. It is gonna limit the time that I'm gonna spend on you know, your, your tough areas, are you okay with that? And they'll say, oh yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'll say, okay. In that case, I will pick the tightest area. I'll spend a lot of time on that tight area. And then the rest is kind of more fluff. My goal today is to try and clear these three areas on him as best as I can. So what I'm feeling is you got your really, really tight, tight, tight spot in the middle. I'll work on it for a little bit and then I'll come and I'll flush everything around it. Because whenever you break stuff up, the lymphatic system is gonna push it back through. And when you release one area, layers will then start to open up in other areas. So it doesn't feel so much like it's not a small trigger point, it's actually quite large in here. So I'm just gonna keep working it until I can find that little spot that's right deep inside it. And I'm sure he can probably feel it. He probably knows. He's, he's probably, I'm guessing, I'm gonna speak for him for a second, let's see if I'm right. He's probably in there going, like just cut that out and get right into that bad spot, will you already? Like it's in there, like find it. Like usually the client can feel the spot that you're looking for. Do you, do you have that perception, Vince? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's, you're just like, I know it's in there. Just, yeah, go in and get it. So what you'll find in a situation like this is the whole thing's super tight, but there's a trigger point in there. You may not be able to find that trigger point because there's too much tightness above it and around it. And 
when you're first practicing, you don't have a lot of experience to know what's going on. So you're kind of going, well, I can't find a trigger point. There's no twitch response. There's, you know, it's, it's not really following. There's no referral pattern, but it's in there. I was like, I know what's in there. So I'm just working all the tissues around it. Now, what I don't want is to have him leaving feeling completely bruised and then dying the next day. So I may only be able to get to do so much. So how do you know how much is, is enough? Well, usually you probably aren't going to spend much more than, like absolutely no more than 15 minutes on one area, but probably about 10 minutes. After about 10 minutes, you know, you're going to start creating a bit of tissue damage and a little bit of bruising, and they've got to heal from that, and then you can go back into that area and keep working on it. So this is almost like a muscle strip and a compression. So sometimes I might have to get up on my toes and give a bit of a compression. I'll take a deep breath just to make sure that my own body is in good posture, and then I'll ask him to breathe, and I'll say, can you take a deep breath in? as he lets it out. I'm going to push in a little bit deeper just to see if I can find it. If you work with their breath, it's a lot less painful for them. And I can feel it just doesn't want to go. It feels like his body's trying to push me out and I'm working against a force. Can you feel that, Vince? Yeah, he can feel that. So this is where I would actually use one of the advanced techniques that I train in tensegrity, the bone tensegrity, because I can feel that there's an issue with that rib. To do that, if you've learned that, I'll actually cover it up so that I'm not sliding, and I'll contact his spinous processes, and I'm going to use my thenar eminence, and this is the main spot here. So I'm here, so I'm about halfway through, like this finger is about halfway through, so I'm on the, his spinous processes. This, I move my thumb here, and I'm going to contact the ribs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself to a nice comfortable position and I'm going to create a containment and I'm just going to push it ever so slightly and I'm going to hold it. There's no sliding, they're just holding me. And I'm feeling for, I'm feeling to feel his body kind of pushing into my hands and all I'm doing is saying, I'm just not going to let that go. I'm not going to let you, you're not going anywhere. So you're literally, it's like trying to hold down a kid with a temper tantrum and I'm just going to hang out here. This is an area where you would spend a little bit longer. And this time doesn't go into the time that you can actually work on the tissue. You want 10 minutes of direct contact. Indirect contact is fine. And I'm gonna wait for that to let go. He may or may not feel it. Most of the time when you're doing this technique, your clients will feel it sort of just before you feel it. And they might even feel like a little bit of a, oh, that kind of relaxed, that feels a little bit better. This could take anywhere from one minute to three minutes, depending on just how much tension is actually inside these bones. And sometimes I'll shift my hand just a little bit when I feel more tension. But when you're first learning, just pick one spot, release it. And the key part to this is after I've released it, grab some more lotion. Ideally, I would have put my bolster on, but I can't pop this guy in my back pocket. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back and see how it feels. And I'm gonna ask him, how does that feel now? Better. Better. Yeah. It's just not pushing out as much, right? So now I'm gonna find that little spot again, be like, mm, can I find him? I can definitely feel more bumpity bumpity bump. See now, kind of like it's. Does it feel like it's? There's more, like bump, bump, bump. Like there's more stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah. Because his body's not pushing out against me. I'll work all around it still. So you're working all of the fascia around it, and you're working the spot directly. You might start to see a little bit of swelling happen. Once you start to see some swelling, just stop. They've had enough.
And this is where you're just paying attention to the clock just so that you know how long you're spending on this area so that you're not overworking it. Now I'm kind of working all the way around it. And I'm assessing, did that shift some of that fascia that I was feeling before, which it has. It feels way looser now going down his spine because I loosened this area. Because remember, everything's connected. One area is going to affect another area. But I'm gonna go back and feel it all because I need to know how much did it affect. Well, I feel like there's fluid moving in here now. I feel like, let's make sure he's draped so that we're not crossing any lines. I feel like there's a whole layer of fascia that's kind of just let go. He may or may not feel that. I could feel a little bit of tension right in through there that didn't let go, right in that upper glute. So I still know I need to work this area here, but I'm gonna check the other side. And the key now is which side feels tighter? And does one feel tighter than the other? Do they both feel the same? And I'll ask him. All right, so here's this side. And now here's this side. Can you feel the difference? Yeah, I can feel the difference. This side's way tougher. Like it's almost like a, like I can't even get through. Like, holy cow, what's going on? Everything is just stuck. Whereas this side is like, nope, it's nice and smooth. Now I'm gonna to go to this side. So whenever you have to decide, well, what do I do? What do I work on next? Go to the area that's the tightest and then compare the two sides. Communicate with your client. Ask your client to pay attention to what you're doing because when they do that, they verbalize it and they say it out loud, they become more aware of it. Sometimes, you know, clients actually fall asleep on the table and they get up and go, I'm not sure what, you know, how much they did. You want them to be aware of exactly what you did. So as you can see here, I'm just warming this up. I'm warming the tissue up. I can just feel just how tense it is. It's so tense. And I'm thinking, where do I start? Like this whole thing is super tense. And then I have to remind myself, oh yeah, right. I was saying right in here was like his second spot right there. So let's go with that. That's that second spot. Hopefully you can see me here. So now I'm gonna work this side, similar to the other side, except this time, feels different. I'm going to move this guy over just a little bit here so you can see what I'm doing. They're getting coils and motions all over the place. Goodness yes, I do absolutely need an assistant. And I need some type of a camera that like hovers over the body. Mm. You know, it might work if I do it this way. That works. Okay. So I just finished working this side. You can see how red that is. Now I'm working this side where that tightness was. That was my number two spot. Now I'm going to assess it. So I'm not just doing motions to do motions. I'm doing this to get a feel for the whole area. I'm making notes of, who. wow, yeah, that's really tight right through there. Okay, but this is my area that I'm focusing on. I made my decision, I'm sticking with it. So let's work this area. This area's a little bit different. This area kind of goes tight like this, whereas this area was more like all around it like that. So you should be able to start to feel these fascial lines in the body and they're, they don't really, they're never the same on both sides of the body or very rarely. And they don't really follow a specific flow. It's just gonna be based on what's going on with your client. Everybody's just a little bit different. And you'll notice that the area is going very, very, very pink because I'm warming up this area and bringing blood flow to the surface. Whereas I wasn't even getting blood flow through here when I was first working because everything was too stuck. So we know that the treatment's working because we're getting so much pink, we're getting so much beautiful blood flow. This whole thing is starting to relax. Even through here, starting to relax. I can feel this like little lump right up through here and I can feel how tight it is through here. I can also, I'm very aware how tight it is through here, but I'm still sticking to my spot. I wanna loosen this up. Grab a bit more lotion here. feels now like the left side has 
a bigger layer of tension. You can see the pink goes right from the top all the way to the bottom. Whereas this side, it seemed to be more congested in that one spot. And it's actually quite nice that you guys can see this pink. You guys can see what's happening. I can feel it. I wouldn't know what was going on if my eyes were closed, but the visual definitely makes this way better. So we established that this was the bad spot, but it just, it doesn't really feel that bad. What feels worse is this little back, and it's got like a little knot right up in there. This little back is worst. This is when I just changed my plan, because my plan was to go into here, but once I opened it all up and got blood flow going, it's tighter here. So then I'll say, okay, what if I come at this angle? What does that feel like? Oh, that feels a lot tighter, because I just changed my angle. And the reason it feels tighter is actually tighter right through here. So from here to here versus initially it was just here. Now I can feel it from here to here and I can feel it here. But I feel it going this way and this way. So then I have to assess which is tighter, this guy or this guy. Not ah, it's this guy. So, yep, I'm still right. The only difference is, is it's tighter up here, see up here, than it is down here. So this is where I originally found it, this is where it actually seems to be worse. And this is just the way that the layers work. So now I'm going to work this upper part. This is where you might want to add in some elbow technique. So with some elbows, I could get in using my elbow in here. And it's kind of hard to see on, my, on the camera right now, but you're just kind of breaking stuff down with the elbow. Or I can use my hands. You could, if you've taken cupping, you could add a cup in there. You could use some grasping tools if you wanted to. You could, whatever you need, whatever you got on hand that you can use to break this guy up. And this is probably that tension that he was describing. I'm gonna move this just so that you can see what I'm doing. So it's kind of like from here to here. So originally it was here. So we started here, here, and here. Those are our bad spots. But now I can really feel it up here. But this is still connected. I look at this and this like it's the same spot. Now what I'm doing here, by the way, you use the same style, whether you're working on a back or whether you're working on a leg, an arm, whatever. You still want to follow the tightest area on the person, follow the lines, assess and reassess. Now, I don't talk out loud like this, explaining everything I'm doing and feeling when I'm working on somebody. However, I'm thinking it. And I usually find what my clients often tell me is, like, how do you know? How do you just know where to go? They've said that to me for years. And it's because of these assessment skills. It's because of the way that I assess my canvas, right? I'm like a painter. This is my canvas that I'm working on and I'm slowly unraveling and unwinding his fascial tension. And then when I find a trigger point, once I feel like it's safe to get in, then I'll go in and hit that trigger point. But I'm not gonna hit a trigger point without warming up all the tissue around it and creating a little bit more give in there so that I can get inside. And for the client, because you've systematically gone from the worst to the least, their nervous system is going to love you. They're going to be like, wow, like how do you just find those spots every single time? And that's how you find them. It's all through your palpation skills. If you don't use palpation assessment, you're just not going to make your client happy. It's just not going to happen. Even clients who say, I just want relaxation, the likelihood is, is there's still a layer of tension. Maybe it's not this hard. Maybe it's just a little bit. You still follow the same rules. It just looks a little bit softer. You're still gonna spend most of your time on the areas that are bad, but then you're gonna do lots and lots and lots of light flushing. And as long as you don't hurt them too much while you're releasing it, and you add in enough relaxation, they're gonna find that balance is, is absolutely perfect. So now I'm kind of going up and across over the spine because there's like a layer of tight fascia up and across. Because that fascia is connected across his shoulder, guess what, they're connected. That means he moves one shoulder, he upsets the other shoulder. 
hold. So you want to break that connection line. And you can feel that tension. It kind of goes boom all the way over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work right in here on this side. And what I'm doing is, is I'm still focused on this, but I need to break this connection line. Because if I break this connection line and release this, then I separate it. Which means as he's moving around, this tightness isn't going to piss this guy off. And I don't have to clear this whole thing today. I'm not concerned about that. I am, however, concerned about ensuring that I just break that fascial line so that it feels nice and soft and flexible, even though the trigger point might still be in there. And then I'll say to him, we're gonna to get to that trigger point next time. And this is where we jump into that 80-20 rule. If I were to have released this, and not this, and he comes in and this is a six out of 10, and this was a four out of 10, but I release this and it's now a two out of 10, now it's a six and a two instead of a six and a four, this is actually gonna feel worse because the brain responds to the worst alarm. So if you had a bunch of alarms going off and you only shut off the softer ones, the louder one will now seem louder. And that's what happens to the body. Shut off the loudest alarm, and then work your way back. And in an ideal world, they come back consistently until they've had, say, anywhere from four, six, 10 treatments. And as long as they come in close together enough, then you get to pick up where you left off and say, okay, then we're gonna work on this one and this one. And then they continuously get better because you're slowly going from his eight out of 10 and get down to his two out of 10. And then what happens is over time, the one that's left, that was say a two out of 10 before, well, it now could become six out of 10 to that person. So a little bit of education is actually really needed when working on people on a continuous basis, because if you don't educate them and let them know that, okay, remember that spot on your back? Remember when that was an eight out of 10? How debilitating was that? What did it stop you from doing? And they might say, yeah, you know, my golf swing was off or, you know, my hockey wasn't all that great and, you know, had a hard time getting in out of the car. Whereas now I can do all that, but it still hurts. Say, okay, then, do you think maybe that it's actually not a six out of 10? It just seems like it because that's now your loudest alarm. And then they're like, yeah. So you have to remind them of the function that they're gaining. So now I can feel a whole swoop around his shoulder. And I can feel those tension lines because it should feel nice and smooth, right? It should feel like my hands are swimming in his back. And if they're not swimming in his back, then there's fascial tension. And then once it feels like, oh yeah, it's nice and fluidy now, it's nice and relaxed, then I'll give up that area and I'll move on. All the while, keeping an eye on my time, because I might have, I might have to adjust my time. Maybe I'm like, oh no, I'm supposed to work on the legs. I'm gonna have to finish up here soon. I might even talk to him about that and say, I might find another area and say, do you want me to just let this go for today and work on your legs or do you want me to spend more time here? They might say, oh yeah, you just spend all the time you want there. You may have to reconsent your treatment. So now that that's feeling a lot smoother, I'm gonna come back now to this tightness. So in this treatment, I'm now, been able to get to his third tight spot, which is super exciting for him. So now I'm working on that last third area and we're about 45 minutes in to the treatment. I've got lots of time still. So even if I've only got 15 minutes, or 20 minutes, depending on if I'm willing to go over a little bit, if I've got that leeway, I know that I can work here and neck, and this guy's super happy. If he wanted, or I wanted to do a full body, then I probably would have maybe just worked this and went and finished just the recipe relaxation. Or maybe I would have did fully release this, maybe released a connecting line, left it, did a little bit on here and go there. As long as the first spot you really clear, the second you clear at least as much as you can and then a little bit on the third, then your, your client's gonna be happy and then they can come back and you can pick up where you left off. And as a note, whenever they come back in the second time, 
I obviously look at their clinic notes, but I always reassess the exact same way. I listen to the body, what's going on with the body today, because it's gonna shift, it's gonna turn, it's gonna change. I have no idea what it's gonna look like when he comes in next. Maybe he had some other treatment somewhere else. All of these things are going to affect what I'm feeling when he comes in. I'm gonna actually switch my camera back there. Perfect, so now you can see this area here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a bit of a redraping because I know this is going into this glute. So I'm going to, so here, I'll just come down a little bit and I'll kind of create like a bit of an angle that way. So then that way I'm exposing a little bit more of the glute, but he'll feel very comfortable because he knows, okay, you know what? We're good here. So I remembered at the beginning of my treatment that it was really, really tight in here. So now I'm gonna go, hmm, what's happening? So again, I'm gonna flush it all out, get an idea of, oh, boom, I, I can't go, it doesn't wanna move, that's a tight spot. But when I go this way, it's tighter going up this way. So we've got a motion here that's tight and a motion here that's tight. I can work either or, but I'm gonna compare them. This definitely is the tightest, for sure. So then I'm gonna to go to this area, and that's how I decided between these two spots. And it's right there. That's his tightest spot. That's the spot, it just doesn't wanna move. It's like if I push in, I feel like there's a force pushing back against me. If I try and go down, it's like jammed. So when I feel that force coming back against me, like it, it, it'll tire you out. You'll be like, holy cow, like I'm exhausted. So as a therapist, you, you shouldn't get exhausted from the work that you're doing. You're getting exhausted because the body is saying no, and you're trying to push through it, and it isn't gonna work. So if you haven't learned how to release the bone yet, then you're probably best just to warm it up as much as you can, and don't hurt yourself. So release this, maybe come up and release this guy. You know, and, and work that layer that's equal. Don't try and push through that really, really tight area because the body is literally gonna say, no way, not happening. So you can just work a layer and just slowly work those layers in, but don't override the body. And when you feel that's really, really tight, that's when I use my bone technique because there's tension in the bone itself. So I'll, again, this is the bad spot. So as long as you're on either side of it, you know that you're covered. Again, I'll, be use, I'll either use my thenar eminence or my hypothenar eminence, depending on what's most comfortable. I'm gonna use my hypothenar because I wanna be this side, right? Whenever you're working with the glutes, you always wanna angle your hand like this. You're never putting your hand towards. It's going this way. So I'm gonna angle it here. I'm gonna to go to the greater trochanter because I'm starting to get my most impact. I'm gonna get a nice low body position, shoulders down, gently pushing in with very little pressure. It's, it's enough pressure that I can feel his body pushing against me and I'm just going, no, you're not going any further, but I'm not pushing in where I can feel a ton of pressure coming in. It's just a little bit, like 20% of the strength that you would use to, if you were to like put in your full strength. This is a big bone, right? The, the ilium is a huge bone. This might take us a few minutes, but even if I can get enough of a release to get some of that tension gone, then he'll be a happy dude. I'll take a few big deep breaths in just make sure that my body is nice and calm your client will often they'll pick up on you taking a deep breath and you'll notice they will as well and I felt it release when I feel it release I give it a little bit more pressure just try and get a little bit more released inside that bone I could probably spend a good five minutes here, but I might not have five minutes. So if I don't have five minutes, I'll just do as much as I can. So that's definitely released a little bit. So let's see where we're at. So now we need to reassess. So what I would have said to him is, hey, can you feel that tightness? And he would have said, yeah. 
and I would say, okay, I'm gonna just try and release the bone and see if I can get into that muscle. And he'll say, okay, and then I'm gonna come back and retest it. So now I'm gonna come through and see what it feels like. And then I'm gonna say to him, what does that feel like now? What does that feel like now, Vince? Right through there. Better. So as you can see here, I'm sliding. It's not stopping me. And if I push in, his body's still pushing, but not near as much. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm not just gonna push in on it because that's silly because his body is still pushing back a little bit. I'm just gonna strip it. So remember that I stand like here, which I'm gonna be standing in front of you, so that's not gonna work. There we go. Okay, so you have a nice comfy position. I'll use two thumbs and I'll strip straight down. And that's just, it's a really nice, simple way of releasing those upper glutes. Just strip them out, stretch them out. You may find some trigger points in there. Just some tightness in through there. And remember, the glutes come up quite high, right? So his iliac crest is like at waist level, is right here. This is all glute. This way. I'll just move around, just try it at different angles. My goal here is to strip the muscle to force a bit of a stretch, force blood flow in there, and also flush the fluid in the whole area. And I'll just work it at different angles. I'm working that fascia, so as I go through here, you can feel the fascia underneath the skin and above the muscles. So I'll loosen up a little bit of that fascia, and then I'll come back to the muscle. Strip a little bit more of that muscle. Really tight spot in here. It's not pushing back a ton. So I'm gonna say, can you take a deep breath in for me, Vince? As he lets out of the breath, I'm just gonna give it a nice big stretch down through there. Right away, what I'm feeling is it's way tighter through here now than it is through his whole back. And it feels tight from about here to here. Here to here. Which is the area that I haven't worked on. Which correlates with what I'm doing. If I feel something that doesn't match what I'm doing, I'll stop, reassess, what's happening, what's going on, this makes no sense, and I'll figure it out. It doesn't seem too bad going this way. I'm gonna flip the other way. I'm gonna come back this way. Boom, it's right in through here. Let's change that a little bit. Okay. So as I come up, it's right through there. I'll work that layer. So as you can see, I'm working layer by layer by layer. I'm just releasing one layer after the other. So if he does any other treatments or home stretching or anything else that he decides to do, it's all good. It just means that they're gonna be working on either another part of the body or another layer. And then when I come back to work on them, I can just reassess the body and say, what layer do I need to work on now? Now, if somebody doesn't have this much going on, he's got a lot going on in his back, super, super, super easy to just do back and neck, like so easy. But some people don't have that much going on. That's not a problem. There's, the likelihood is, is there's gonna be some part of that person where there is a lot going on. Well, in that case, you do a full body and you spend a little bit of extra time on a tough area and then just go through the relaxation, maybe of arms and legs. And, a little bit of cranial at the end on their neck if you know you didn't need to spend a lot of time on an area you can easily spend a good 10-15 minutes at the end of a treatment just doing some gentle cranial techniques which you learn in um, if you haven't learned it then definitely ask to just to learn a couple of basic cranial techniques for relaxation at the end or you can add in a little bit of extra foot treatment or a little extra hand whatever will help that person just completely relax their whole system, help relax their autonomic nervous system.
and as I come up through here, I can find another spot up it. So now that I've worked through there and I'm, and I, I, I flow like a stream, right? I just, I kind of just, I'm always kind of moving and flowing. I'm always kind of going, all right, that let go. Oh, that feels tighter. I'm, I'm back up in here. Understandably so, this was his bad area. Now, if I was running out of time, I wouldn't be able to get to this today, but I still got a few minutes. I'm still good. I can actually feel tension. I'm right on his spinous process. So there's a spinous process above and below and I'm in between and I'm loosening up the fascia right over his spine. Because loosening up that fascia, it's actually gonna break the lines between the two sides. And he's gonna find that as he's doing stuff, right, one side's not gonna be upsetting the other side. So he'll notice a little bit of more function. He's definitely somebody who can book it for two hours. He's probably going, oh, I wish I hadn't booked her another treatment today. I'd, I'd just stay here, just keep filming. However, you do get a lot of histamine release with this type of work, so he might leave a little bit stuffed up. So two hours, he'll probably feel like he has a full blown sinus infection. So now I'm like, okay, I wanna be able to be able to work on his neck. So I'm gonna finish up. And when I finish up, I'm gonna kind of redrape there a little bit. And it's just flushing. So it's very similar to how I started, but I'm assessing. How do things feel now compared to the way when it first started? And I might make some treatment notes that say, yeah, there's, there's still a lot right up through here and say, yeah, I'd really like to work on that left, you know, work maybe on that left rhomboid and work on that left infraspinatus and take a look at that. But then on the next treatment, that might not be the tightest spot. But I'll still write it down just to give me an idea, just to double check, kind of create an inventory of the way my client's bodies respond. And this flushing is just gonna push fluid. So remember when you're pushing fluid, you're pushing fluid into the auxiliary down into the inguinal and abdomen. So you're pushing down and then pushing straight down. And that's how your flushing is gonna work. Down into the inguinal, into the axillary. And any fluid, like every time you break an area up, the body's gonna bring fluid in to try and push it out. And then you wanna push that fluid. Now here, depends on what clinic you're working at, what you've got accessible to you. Here we've got some nice warm towels. Sometimes they're wet, sometimes they're dry. I prefer dry towels because then they don't get cold. And a nice warm towel, and that's just comforting. Once I put the warm towel on, if you don't have warm towels, I'll just put the sheet over. Again, I'll find that spine again. How does it feel now? And I'll do a little assessment. Definitely a bit more movement in there. Let's get a feel. What's it feeling like? For the client, it shows confidence in what you're doing. Wow, she's doing the exact same thing she did at the beginning. She, you know, they, they may not even pick up on what you're doing consciously, subconsciously. They'll know. Their bodies know, right? Their bodies are connecting with you. And they may not be able to articulate it, but they'll get a sense. They'll know, wow, you, you really have a systematic approach, don't you? And I'll say, yeah, absolutely. Exact same thing. looking for with neck is where are the shoulders at? Are the shoulders too far up? I will check and see where the motion is with the shoulders. Individually, they're not moving too bad. Collectively, they're really tight. So again, kind of feel sort of where the fascia is, 
a little bit of muscle in through the pecs, going into the anterior deltoids. Where is he right up underneath C7? Come up through the neck, right up under the occiput. And here, now there's a lot of people who, they have a hard time letting their heads go, so this can be quite challenging for some people. I'll often say just try and just let your head fall into my fingertips. Because if they try holding it, they think they're helping you, they're gonna resist and you're not gonna get a good feel for what's going on. So here I'm gonna feel for how much tension, and as you can see up here, how much tension do I feel under here? Can I move the head at all? Or is it locked forward? Or is it locked backwards? Can my, do my fingers sink in? Do I feel that tension? Do I feel tension more on one side or the other side? And just hanging out here. Most clients, this is like their favorite technique ever. They're like, oh my gosh, I feel so good. I just, you don't have to let go. Just hang out there for the next 10 minutes. I spent five minutes just holding this spot while the area releases. So while you're doing this assessment, don't think that your client isn't enjoying the treatment because this always feels so good. His right side's definitely tighter. Now, when I work on the head, I know that a lot of teachers will teach you to put their head in this position at work. I won't allow that. So you can never do that in my class because you need to be in control of his head at all times or her head, whoever you're working on. And if you put it in this position and leave it, you're gonna pinch off a nerve. And somebody's got arthritis, somebody's got something going on in the neck that you don't know about, way too risky. So you wanna be in control. So always, right, I can flip back and forth. I'm in control. So I know you can't see what's going on on this side, so I'm just gonna do it on this side. But the right, that right side was tighter. And, but I've got my hand on this side, so I can move it. Because I can tell if, his, if he's tense, and I'm gonna put him into the most comfortable position possible, then I'm gonna work on it, and I'll move his head around. I'm not gonna put him in this, and like put pressure in. I'll move his head to where I need to, so that I'm never having to apply too, too much pressure. And then I'll go back and forth between the two sides because I don't want his head being in one spot too long. I'll switch it over to the other side. And again, I'll bring his neck back a little bit. I'll kind of readjust it. For him, it's his posterior scalenes on the side. I can do like a little knot in there. absorbing water solutions so we can go a little bit more. Now maybe you are needing to work some pecs up through here. Maybe you know maybe he's got a lot of issues going on with his upper pecs. Maybe you've got some extra time on his neck that you like, okay, well maybe I can spend a bit of time where you can go from one side to the other. So I could just slide over and work that upper pack. There's usually always something to find. It's very rare that you work on someone and there's nothing to work on. If there's nothing to work on, then you can always work on that autonomic nervous system. Put them into their parasympathetic nervous system. And if you haven't learned different techniques to do that, definitely. Um, Either watch the videos on that, or when you're in clinic, ask your instructors. Maybe take a few extra courses in cranial. So you could do that to both sides. One of the fastest ways to work on the vagus nerve, the vagus nerve comes out of the ear and down, very gently, at the very top of the SCM, very slowly. People who are highly anxious or have a lot um, cranially going on, this could be really, really super tender. And it might even cause them to kind of jolt out. And they may be like, I don't like that. And because you kind of hit a nerve, right? Literally, you hit a nerve. Like emotionally, physically, you hit a nerve. You hit the nerve. You hit the mother nerve, basically. And then you can work your way down that SCM.
And remember, you're always going to stay to the back side. You don't ever want to go inside the SCM, this side of the SCM always. And you can spend quite a bit of time. And then once I'm done working all of those specific areas, I will come back to that suboccipital release and I'll have to take a nice deep breath in and out. Okay, I could probably spend a good 30 minutes just releasing his neck. And then just drop your shoulders a little bit. Maybe put your arms down to your sides for a second and then point your fingers towards your toes and then relax, boom, just let it drop, let everything drop. All right, we need to get him to try and relax these upper shoulders. Can you bring your shoulders up to your ears and kind of just do a bit of a contraction, hold, 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 and then completely let it go, go, boom. Nice, okay, so now we've got these a little bit looser. It's a skill to let your body go. It's a really hard thing to do and it takes practice especially if there's a lot going on or you're having a tough day or there's underlying stress, maybe you didn't get a good night's sleep. All of these things, your body holds it all. And there you go. You can come up and do some scalp work. There's always something that you can work on. You can do like your, you know, your maybe a sinus, everyone loves sinus work. You could add in some sinus if you needed some, if you had that extra time. So there's always lots of choices that you can do. You're just gonna pick things that are gonna work with what that client's treatment plan was or with what that client's needs are. So if somebody doesn't like their head being touched, obviously you don't wanna work on it. If they want deep tissue work and you spend all your time over here, they're not gonna be happy. But as long as you're finding that balance to what makes them happy, over time, these things will just start coming to you.